as well as uh, the D word for diversity, um, there is another big D word um, that is uh, ever present in our minds when we talk about publishing and the industry's future, which is of course digital. So when you think about the future of publishing, uh, what opportunities do you see um, in relation to diversity in a digital era? And we'll start with uh, Richard. Thanks for that for a fastball on a Monday morning. You know, the first thing I was going to say was that it was good for a change uh, for there to be uh, a seminar that wasn't about digital, because they seem to be <laughs> here, there, and everywhere, and that it was going to be welcome to discuss the other important D word, diversity. I'll make a broader remark, if I may, to start than answering that point directly, which is to say, and, and to pick up on your earlier comments, that there is clearly a problem with the level of diversity in publishing. Um, we can see that from, from statistics, from evidence, that skill set of, of put together, which shows that the representation of black ethnic minorities in our workforce is down from 5% in 09 to 4% this year, compared with 9% in the UK, and if you look at London, where we get 36% of our employees from, um, then you can see that there's no proportional representation going on. So one thing I suppose that might happen as publishing companies become more digitally literate and digitally savvy, they will have to start, they are starting already, uh, recruiting people from different backgrounds to those they've traditionally recruited people from. And one corollary of that will be, I hope and, and expect fully, that the, the types of people coming in to publishing will be different. And the other point I'd, I'd make uh, in answer in general is this, I don't think that this is just an issue around ethnicity and race. Um, I'm from South Wales and from a comprehensive school in South Wales, there's no way anyone would have ever come into my careers fair and said, how does a, a career in the creative industry sound? And, oh, by the way, my dad works in some great TV company. How about a work placement for the summer? wasn't on the agenda. wasn't on the horizon. So as all creative industries, because it isn't just publishing, uh, get with, uh, have to start approaching their workforces in a different way, I think the pool of talent they will fish in will grow and that some of these disproportionalities will, will be resolved. Okay, well, I'll come back to you on the digital point, but um, Shamila, what do you think? Are there more opportunities? Is it going to create a more level playing field? Um, when I started thinking about this whole seminar, I actually thought I could be optimistic or pessimistic, depending on what mood I feel in. And I think that's true of the digital um, question as well. On one hand, it could be a really good opportunity to democratise publishing in many ways. Um, as people, I think the whole idea, for example, of self-publishing will, will not be seen in the same light with the, the onset of the, the real digital era, and I think that it will gain a lot more kudos than it has at the moment. Um, so I think that there are lots of opportunities whereby um, the traditional publishers, the traditional literary agents, could be bypassed, um, and they could be seen as a blockage in this system in terms of enabling diversity. On the other hand, there could also be a, a digital ghettoization, whereby people find it really hard to, to attract audiences outside that little group of people that they already know, whether it's online or um, you know through Facebook or whatever. So I'm kind of on the fence, really. But there's possibilities, it's just how we utilize them. I, I, I sort of, um, I'm in two minds about the seminar today because in some ways it's a shame that we're having a discussion a decade after um, some wonderful reports that have come out by the bookseller about diversity. And I sort of disagree with Richard because I do think it's about colour. I think we've got about 3%, 4% of our sort of senior management and people in editorial functions uh, who come from a diverse background. Um, and, and until we sort of change the way we look at those functions, editorial, marketing, and design, I think the sort of face of um, publishing isn't going to change. But going back to your question with regards to the other D word, I think um, uh, what, it, what it presents us is an opportunity. And that opportunity is for writers who um, 
sort of the main publishing um, business sort of they sort of ignore. I think it's an opportunity for a lot more people to be published. So those pluses and minuses. Your, your um, uh, blogger as well, aren't you? You're yeah. out there. <laughs> So what do you think? Um, when, when I first started writing, the, the, only ways, the only ways we were told was were to get your names in magazines and submit short stories for journals and try and build up a portfolio that way. But the, with the onset of digital, and ha I, I started in music journalism and uh, the way I saw how digital affected the music industry, I, I feel like there's opportunities for the publishing industry to look to it as well. And... Um, one of the things that the music industry has been really good at doing is accepting that instead of instead of uh, s selling records to half a million or a million record buyers, they've um, seen that there are niches within um, the music buying public and they're the tribes, as it were, and they've specifically gone and found different ways to attract those tribes and get them behind these bands that they're trying to put out. And I think that that's one way that um, uh, publishing can uh, utilize digital is to embrace the various niches. When I um, when I was sending my book out before it got picked up by Quartet, I was told that um, the book was too niche because it was about rap and it was about Asians and um, it was set in the suburbs. And um, my my publisher very sort of smartly said, "Well, let's go and take this book to the rap blogs and let's take it to." Um, the Asian readers, of which, who, whom there are many, and um, let's take it to people who uh, want to read these types of books. And uh, a lot of the promotion has been digital. So, so it's for you, it's obviously been opportunities. Yeah, and because I, I've been responsive to it by blogging, by putting up YouTube videos, by because the book was about music, there was a very obvious um, few bits of promotion that we could do um, in, with regards to making music that went alongside the book. And, um, it, it gets spread around. And, so yeah, it's been useful for me. Good. Adisha. Um, I think that digital has changed absolutely everything about the way we see uh, all forms of culture from publishing and radio and music to even things like, like art and it's changed the way we we read reviews, we read uh, reports of events like this. and. The reason there are so many events about digital happening at the moment is that because we're in the throes of the revolution, no one knows quite how the cards are going to fall. I want to second what people have said about the p potential for digital ghettoization because what digital has done in terms of diversity is to create a free arts underclass who are working without payment. So yes, of course you can say, um, okay, I'm going to put on uh, the first chapter of my next book, I'll do it for free, and then I'll do some interviews online, or I'll interview myself, I'll put on a video, we'll do this, that, and the other. Actually, it ought to be publishing houses who get onto the digital revolution. It cannot be the responsibility of artists themselves to take up the labor unpaid, and this is why I am very um, in favor of actual publishing houses which give real jobs to real people getting on board uh, this issue of diversity so that there is a normalization of racial and class and ability diversity all the way through the industry from the bottom right to the very top. It looks from the outside as though publishing is very diverse because there are lots of novels by lots of international authors being published but actually even on the outside the novels by so-called diversity is a very big euphemism authors which are being published often play into racial stereotypes themselves. I have a whole riff that I do that if you want to write a book which will have a cover image of a lady in a veil looking a little bit sad, you can do that, or a lady in a kimono looking a little bit sad, or a lady in a village setting looking a bit sad. You can do that, but as Nikesh said, that if you want to do something a little bit cooler and outside of the box, suddenly uh, very mainstream audiences, I'm not talking about elite audiences who understand this, this whole discourse, um, don't quite know where to put you and so the responsibility falls back upon all of these other people, these marginal people who are having to do it all for free to suddenly get onto the internet and drum up support and we shouldn't have to do that. Publishing companies do have power and money 
and they need to leverage that in order to get onto digital. We can't all be doing sort of self-publishing POD by ourselves from our one computer terminal. 